to The Gothic Chef. Today we're making Boilo. Boilo is an absolutely delicious drink made around Christmas time and New Year's. It is very smooth and very delicious. It is based on a Lithuanian drink called Krupnik. And it is a drink that was typically drunk, drank by the coal miners of Pennsylvania in specific. Um, it was brought to Pennsylvania by the Polish uh, immigrants and the Italian immigrants uh, latched on to it as well. My grandfather was a coal miner in Pennsylvania. That was his first job before he became a plumber. And it is made with typically the fruits that you see around Christmas time, like oranges, etc. And it is very smooth and very delicious and very powerful. So that is what we're going to make today. Boilo, stay tuned. So I'm going to go through the ingredients and one of the most important ingredients in Boilo is honey. Uh, you don't have to use raw unfiltered honey. You can use any honey you want, but there's a lot of honey in it. Um, later on in the video, I say there's two pounds, but no, actually there's four and a half pounds of honey in my grandfather's recipe. And that's the recipe we're going to be using today. It's pretty much a traditional recipe. It's, it's kind of, you're probably gonna, it's going to look familiar to a lot of other recipes, but the first ingredient is honey. And then uh, we mix the honey with water, just plain fresh cold water. And then there are a, bunches, a bunch of fruits and spices that you will see uh, coming up next that also go in, including one cup of dark raisins. Uh, don't use the golden raisins, use the dark raisins, they're better. And then uh, we will also add about a teaspoon of whole cloves, a teaspoon of caraway seeds, a tablespoon of allspice berries, eight cinnamon sticks, four oranges and three lemons quartered, the zest of the oranges and the lemons, about a tablespoon, and some fresh nutmeg, and then of course the star of the show, Four Queens Whiskey. Okay, so we're going to get started. Uh, this is the pan that I'm going to be using to make the boilo. You want at first a nice deep pan uh, because you're going to have a lot of stuff in it at first. So you do want a nice deep pan. So this is about an eight quart uh, soup pot. That's what this is. So um, you want to use a nice deep pot. I know I repeated that 86 times. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our water in. And you're going to put the water and the honey in, and you want to put it on high at first. So, uh, like you saw, I have the honey in a nice um, bowl of hot water because then all you'll get as much honey as you can out of the containers. So we're going to start off with this one. I'm going to dump this in. Just put all your honey in. This is going to take the longest, actually, pretty much. This and simmering it. I want to get every drop of precious honey you can possibly get in there. You want to mix the water and the honey together first before you put all of the other ingredients in. Because you want to make sure that the honey is completely melted in with the water so that it doesn't stick to any of the ingredients. I know it sounds stupid because like what does it matter? It's all going to heat together, but it's just the way we do it. So, and it's worked. So I, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So that's 
and make sure we get as much honey out of the container as possible. The hot water helps keeping it in hot water until you're ready for it because it gets it unstuck from the container. Okay, so we'll get the next one. And again, we're using the recipe calls for two and a half pounds. I am going to put the original recipe on my website, but my significant other, Honey, wants me to try it with just two pounds because it's, quote, a little sweet. It's supposed to be sweet. That's the whole point. When the coal miners were going underground, 100 feet underground and it was freezing cold this was a nice delicious drink that they used to warm themselves up and believe me when I tell you one little shot of this and you will be singing <laughs> and you'll be nice and warm trust me uh, many people have thought that this was a wussy drink that you go ahead and taste it and oh this isn't strong at all and then they went to stand up and the ground was their best friend <laughs> trust me when I tell you especially if you're gonna put 190 proof alcohol in it which is very hard to find so I'm not going to do that today I'm gonna actually do the cheap four queens which is what a lot of people use. Now I have some leftover honey from these other containers, so I'm going to try and get these in here too. And that will make two pounds of honey completely. But, the re like I said, the recipe calls for two and a half pounds. You judge. Make the recipe the original way first. If it's too sweet for you, which I don't think it is, then cut a half a pound out. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not, gonna, it's not going to make it not work, but it'll just be less sweet. There's a lot of people who have recipes where it's more acetic. It's got more of a lemon taste to it. I personally don't like it. This is my grandfather's recipe, and I'm sticking to it. So there's that one. We got one more with a little bit in it. Get that in there. Okay. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, the hot water really does work. It helps get the pretty much every drop of honey you can get out of the jar, which is what you want. Okay. All right, now you're going to get a little sticky because, you know, honey is very sticky. So make sure you mix this thoroughly. And as soon as the honey is completely melted with the water, then we're going to put the rest of our ingredients in. So you see how it's it's starting to get melted. So I'm going to do that. You keep stirring it. You can kind of tell when you're stirring it if it's really thick still or if it's, you know, if it's getting, if it's thinning out, you know, if it's melding with the water. You can tell by the way you're stirring it. It's starting to look pretty good. All right, I think we can start putting our other ingredients in. Um, put the oranges and lemons in last. I'm going to put the smaller ingredients in first. So I'm going to put our zest in next. This will add a, a nice fragrant flavor to it. So I'll put that in. And 
and then we will put our caraway seeds in. Caraway seeds. And then let's put the allspice berries in. And then the cloves. cinnamon sticks in next. Okay, now we'll put the raisins in. Stir those up nice. the oranges in a little at a time. You don't want it splashing up at you. Oranges and the lemons. Okay. Oh, did I forget a sticker? Oh no, we're good. Thought I forgot a sticker. Yeah, make sure you take the stickers off, okay? No one will die, but I don't think you want a sticker in with your boilo. Not sure why they put all those stupid stickers on there in the first place. Okay, so you want this to come to a boil, and then you're going to immediately turn it down to simmer and simmer it for 30 minutes. So we'll cover it up and let it bring, come to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer for 30 minutes. I'll be back. Okay, we have a boil. Now we want to turn this all the way down to simmer. Give it a nice stir. The foam on the top is the honey, and that's okay. That'll dissipate. Give it a nice stir. Okay, and we want it, you turn it all the way down to low, all the way down. You want it to do a nice simmer. Tap, tap, tap. For 30 minutes. And I'm going to put a little bit of nutmeg in. Use fresh nutmeg. Tap, tap, tap. It, usually, it only takes a couple seconds, as you can see. And mix that in. Okay. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. Put the lid back on. Let it simmer for 30 minutes exactly. And then when I come back, I will show you how to strain it. I'll be back. Okay. 30 minutes is up. And this is what it looks like after it's been simmering for about 30 minutes. You see the uh, oranges have definitely wilted in the lemons and the raisins are all smushy. It has a nice <clears throat> chocolate dark brown color to it. Now, you must strain this immediately because you don't want the oranges and the lemons sitting in this until it cools. You want, uh, because it'll, it'll make it bitter. And you don't want it bitter. You want it nice and sweet and smooth. So we're going to strain it into another pot. So I will shut the stove off. And I will don my uh, oven mitts. And we're going to strain it over 
a fine strainer like that okay now you can use a cheesecloth sometimes I do that and sometimes I don't if I'm giving it away I might use a cheesecloth because if you strain it through a cheesecloth you will not have any residuals from the raisins or the uh, the orange meat and the lemon meat and etc etc it'll be completely smooth and clear okay if you strain it through a fine mesh strainer like this you'll have a little bit of residual at the bottom and you'll have to shake it up but it has a thicker smoother cream like not not creamy but a, a thicker flavor to it so I'm only going to use the fine mesh strainer you can't don't use a, a big whole one because you'll get all the caraway seeds in so you want a fine mesh strainer and you're going to strain this out carefully okay and there's more in here so we'll Okay. Now you can let this sit like this until it completely drains so you get all of the fine juices. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take this part out and then show you what's left. And this is what's left. This gorgeous elixir. Okay, very nice. Ah, if you could only smell this. Oh, it smells divine. Now, this is very important. You must let this cool off completely before you put the alcohol in. If you put the alcohol in when it's not cooled off completely it will burn off the alcohol and well now what good is that okay so you want this not only when it's not steaming like it is now you want it completely cooled off you can even put this in the refrigerator overnight and then add the whiskey the next day or whatever alcohol you're going to put in it. Whiskey is is great. You could put in cinnamon whiskey if you want, but it's going to be really powerful cinnamon wise. I I use like I said either the 190 proof homemade moonshine, which is completely illegal, and uh, no, I don't know where to get it. <clears throat> or I use the Four Queens, which is 101 proof and seems to be user friendly for pretty much most people. So that's what I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using the Four Queens alcohol. But, again, I will not be putting this in here until this is completely cool. Completely. Till it's cold. Till it's actually cold. Not just warm. Cold. So once this is cooled off completely, I will come back. And I will show you how to, you know, put the whiskey in. And uh, we'll have a taste. Okay. See you later much later okay well it's the next day uh, I put my mixture in the refrigerator and it's beautiful it's nice and thick and uh, smooth and all the seeds and rinds and everything is out of it and it's just a beautiful almost chocolatey mixture so now that it's nice and cold we are going to put the star of the show in there we're going to put two bottles of four queens whiskey it is 101 proof i don't know if you could see that on the front 101 proof so we're going to uh, put both of these in just dump them right in Splashy, splashy. Okay. Yes, 
You need two of them. So this is going to make about a gallon of Boilo. You can share it with your friends, give them as presents, you know, for those who would like a little zip in their life. So once you get those in, mix it very thoroughly. Make sure that the whiskey and the Boilo mixture are completely combined. Because you don't want any spots where you're drinking it and you're going to have uh, more whiskey or more boilo. You want it thoroughly mixed. It will mix quite well. And then what to do is repurpose the bottles. Just going to take one of the bottles. And you're going to put a funnel in the top and I recommend using something with a handle and something with a spout. I don't know if you could see that. It's got a spout on the end so that you can pour it because this you will get sticky. I'll tell you right now. So we're going to dip it in and then we're going to Pour it in the bottle. Okay. So I will get these all in the bottle and I will come back and we will have a taste. It's as simple as that. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm done pouring. Uh, it made three of the Four Queens bottles. And one, I don't know if you could see, of these big jars. That's about a two quart jar. So, all told, about a gallon. Okay. So, let's pour and have a taste. Get yourself a nice fancy glass. Oop. Spill it all over the place. So let's give it a try, shall we? Chin chin. Mmm. Mmm mmm mmm. Cinnamon goodness. Try it out. You'll love it. I do have to say, though, be careful with it. It's a lot more powerful than you think it is. Goes down very smooth, but packs a punch. Happy New Year. So there you have it. Boilo. The traditional drink of the coal miners of Pennsylvania and a traditional drink at Christmas time and New Year or really any time you want. Give it a try. The recipe will be in the description below and it'll be on my website. There will be a link to my website below. Please try it. Subscribe. Share it with your friends. Let me know how you like it. And I'll see you next time on The Gothic Chef.